Again, um, welcome to everybody. Uh, good to have you here. We're beginning a season of Advent, the season of coming. It's a new church here, a new season, um, a season where we're getting ready to celebrate Jesus' first coming as we also look forward to his second coming. And as we see people getting ready for his first coming and, and waiting for those promises, um, that inspires and encourages us in our lives of waiting for him to come. Charlie was 10. And school had just gotten out for Christmas, and the family was going to be spending the holiday in the country. And little Charlie was just really happy to be out of the dirty city of London and into the snow-covered hills in the countryside where their cottage was. So he spent the morning just in playing outside and enjoying the snow and just having a great time. And then, and then uh, about midday, his, his mom asked him if he wanted to go for a drive. Are you kidding me? Of course. That would be awesome. He, he couldn't wait to go on a, a drive with his mom through the beautiful countryside, seeing all the uh, beautiful sights, seeing the scenery, and, and just getting that time with him and his mom. This is going to be the, uh, the beautiful moment in the making here. And so they got into a car, and she began driving the car down the twisty roads with the tires crunching the snow. And, and little Charlie just had his face pressed against the glass of the window, steaming it up, looking outside at all the beautiful countryside, the snowy um, scenery passing by, and, and Charlie was thrilled. His mom got, was getting a little bit anxious, though, because the, the condition of the roads got worse and worse as the heavier snow fell, and, and the visibility started lessening a bit, and, and it just was getting worse and worse, and, and then finally she, she took the car around one curve and the whole car just started sliding, and it just kept sliding until it was into the ditch. And they were all right, but, but she, was, she was trying to drive out, but, but the tires just spun. And so little Charlie got out, little, uh, Charlie pushed while mom pressed the gas pedal, but no luck. They were stuck. They needed help. So they began walking down the road, and they walked down the road a mile before they found their first house. And so they came up to the house, they knocked on the door, and the, the woman opened the door and, and said, of course, of course, come on in, warm yourselves up, make yourselves at home, the, the phone is yours. And she offered them uh, tea and, and cookies um, and, and urged them to stay until help arrived. The woman who opened the door for them never forgot that day. She, she told the story a thousand times, but who could blame her? It isn't often that royalty shows up on your porch. Because the two travelers stranded by the England winter were no less than Queen Elizabeth and the heir to the throne, 10-year-old Charles. Now, something much greater has happened in our world. Right? Um, royalty has walked down our streets. Heaven's prince has knocked on our door. The only thing is, his visit was no accident. And he stayed and did a whole lot more than just stay for tea. The king arrived. The king arrived. And it had been a long time coming. A long time coming. People had waited for a long, long time. We need to think about that. I mean, we're not that good at waiting for things these days, are we? It seems to me that we're getting less and less good at waiting for things. <laughs> we don't like waiting for things at all because we, we're, we're almost to the point where we want everything instantly. I, just, I remember how, you know, how long you would wait to, to send out an email or have an email come in, and you know, like a 15-minute process. Like we want things instantly today, and if, we, and if we don't have it instantly, then we need a faster computer or a newer phone. Because we want things instantly. We want, we want everything is next day shipping. Remember when it was like six to eight weeks? We want next day shipping. We want stuff delivered today. I want it at my door in 30 minutes or less. We want things now. So I don't think we're good at waiting for things anymore. And why wait to save up money? Just use your credit card, right? We, we don't have to wait for a whole lot of anything. Well, it's always been hard to wait for things, though, especially if we think of children waiting for Christmas. It's always been hard for children to wait for Christmas. It, Christmas didn't it used to seem like it took forever 
maybe now when we get older, like, oh, all of a sudden, here it is. But, like, when you were young, it took forever to wait for Christmas to come. So in, in this world that we live in of, of things that are so instantaneous so often, um, imagine, imagine waiting your whole lifetime for something. Your whole lifetime. Imagine waiting your whole lifetime and, then, and never receiving in your generation, never receiving what had been promised. This was the story of, of millions of followers of, of believers, of followers of the Lord, of the story of millions of believers who have gone before us, waiting whole lifetimes for what had been promised. They, they, they needed, as, as we heard in the Old Testament, judges, right? They needed a king. They needed a king. They waited for a king. They were waiting for a Messiah, someone to come and rule them, someone to come and deliver them, someone to come and save them. And they waited. They waited for years. They waited for centuries. And they were, they were waiting. They were trusting. They were hoping. They were persevering. And then finally, one day, what the whole world had been waiting for was finally going to happen. Th th this promise that, that, that people have been waited lifetimes for, that waited centuries for, generations for, was about to be fulfilled. Royalty was arriving in the world. The king was coming. And this was big, so God sent an angel to announce, to share the good news that this was happening. These are the words. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Mary was, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born. To be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she was said to be unable to conceive as in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Imagine you're Mary and you receive this news. You're going to have a child when there's no reason for you to have a child. And not only are you going to have a child when there's no reason for you to have a child, but th all this description about him in, from this angelic visitor, he will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Well, Mary, knew who the, Mary was a descendant of David. So was Joseph. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. He's going to be the son of, not of Joseph, the son of God. And the son of God will be conceived in you by the Holy Spirit. Her son, Mary, your son is going to be the king that everyone's been waiting for. He's going to be the king that you have been waiting for, the one you have been waiting to worship, the one you have been waiting to honor. He's going to be the king that everyone's been waiting for. And so he'd be the one who would reign over the house of Jacob, meaning the house of Jacob. That would be referring to God's spiritual people, not just a national line, but God's spiritual people, those who, those who believe in the Lord, those who follow the Lord. He's going to be over the house of Jacob, over God's spirit. He's going to rule. So he's not going to just be an earthly king. He's going to rule in the hearts of God's spiritual people, of people who believe in God. You're to give him the name Jesus. 
meaning the one who saves. <laughs> You're going to give him the name, one who saves. And when the angel said the same thing to Joseph um, not long after this, he said, you're, you're going to give the name Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. So this king, this would be the king who was coming, all right? This was the king who was coming to crush our enemy. <laughs> it goes all the way back to Genesis where Adam and Eve and everyone since, every, every mother since, every family since was waiting for that seed of the woman who would be born to crush the enemy. So this would be the king who would crush the enemy and ransom us back to God. This would be the king who would be bringing mercy to messy people like us. This would be the king who would come to be ruling in our hearts with his love and grace. And as shocking as it might have been, as shocking as it might be for this royal visitor to finally be appearing in our world, it's what we were waiting for all along. It's what God's people have been waiting for all along. Expecting, waiting, hoping for. The king is coming. This is good news because this king won the victory. He, he won the victory that made it possible for us to be with him. So when, we, when, this, when this son of Mary, then when he finally got out and started preaching, when he finally got out and started talking about what he was going to be doing and, and what was happening, these were his first words. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This was Jesus' very first message. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. What is the good news of the kingdom of God? What is that good news? Look at the whole story. The, the story begins all the way back in Genesis 1 and 2. The story begins with we were created, we were made to live in a world where every relationship was whole and perfect. Because God was the king. So every relationship is whole. Every relationship is perfect. Everything fits. Everything works because God is the king. But then in Genesis 3, the, we hear the next part of the story, right? Each of us have chosen to be our own king. We, we, we've gone the way of, of self, self-ruling, of self-centeredness. And self-centeredness destroys relationships. Whereas when God is ruling, relationships are whole and perfect. When self is ruling, it destroys relationships. Nothing makes you more miserable or less interesting than self-centeredness, than self-absorption. When, all, when this is all we are thinking about um, or talking about, how, how am I doing? How am I feeling? How am I being treated? A- am I... Um, Am I succeeding? Am I failing? Am I proving my worth? Am, am I being treated justly? When all of our focus is in ourself, nothing, nothing makes us more miserable or less interesting. Why do we have conflict in the world? Why do we have struggles between different classes and types of people? Why do we have... Um, why do families break up and explode apart? Why do we have relationship issues? It all starts with self-centeredness. It, it comes from the darkness of self-centeredness. When, when we decide to be our own center, when we decide to be our own king, when we decide to rule ourselves, um, everything falls apart. No, nothing works the way it's supposed to. Everything falls apart physically. Um, socially, spiritually, psychologically. And what, we do, what, what happens is we find ourselves outside the presence of the real king, ruling ourselves, sending our lives on ourselves outside the presence of the real king. And as long as we are in that place where we're outside his presence and trying to rule ourselves, we find ourselves longing to be back in his presence. We find ourselves longing to be brought back in his presence. And we see that longing. That longing shows up in all of our hopes and dreams. That longing shows up in all of our stories. All the stories we tell, all the stories we write, all the stories we dream of show that longing because they all have a similar sort of storyline that sounds like this. 
the, the true king will return. The, the real king, the true king will return, and he's going to slay the dragon, and he's going to kiss us and wake us out of our sleep of death. He's going to rescue us from our imprisonment in the tower, and he's going to bring us back into the palace. The true king, the real king is going to return, and he's going to make everything right. He's going to heal everything and make the world right again and renew the world. That longing is built into every one of us because we've put ourselves outside of the presence. And so the good news, what is the good news of the kingdom? The good news of the kingdom coming is this, that Jesus is that real king. Jesus is that true king, and his story is real. He's real. It's not just a story. He really is here. This has really happened. His story is true. And so Jesus won the victory. He won as our king. He won the victory that brought us back into God's presence. He won the victory that brought us back, and he now rules in our hearts. And so when Jesus comes, when he comes as a king who's ruling in our heart, everything that's broken in our life starts to heal. We said that self-ruling, centering our lives on ourselves, self-centeredness, that destroys relationships, that that throws everything out of whack. But when Jesus starts ruling in our heart, when Jesus comes and rules in our heart as our king, everything that's broken in our life begins to heal. Everything's sad becomes untrue. When Jesus comes, His coming ushers in the end of fear, the end of suffering, and the end of death. This king is worth waiting for, isn't he? This king is worth waiting for. The word, I've already said it a few times, I guess, today the word advent means coming. The word advent means coming. Jesus came once, And he's going to be coming again. So there's two comings. There's two advents. We live between the two advents. We live between the two advents. The first time Jesus came, as the angel announced it to Mary, Jesus came to forgive us from our sins. And the second advent will be when Jesus the King returns for us. And so that is the advent that we are waiting for. In the same way that Mary and everyone that, has gone, that went before her was waiting for the first advent. We're waiting now for the second advent. And Jesus promised that he will come again. Here we, we hear these words in Hebrews chapter 9. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time. Not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So as he came, Christ will come. But he won't come as he came. <laughs> the first time he came, when he was born in Bethlehem, he came, um, he came very, we'll say, quietly. The second time, he's going to come in glory with a shout and a trumpet. The first time he came, very few noticed. The second time he came, all nations will be gathered before him. The first time. In Bethlehem, Joseph placed him in a manger. At his second advent, Jesus can be seated on a throne. We hear these words in um, Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. We are between the two advents. We're in the already, but not yet. Already, but not yet. So we enjoy the blessings and the gifts of the first advent, and we look forward to the glory of the second advent. We, we, we celebrate the first advent to whet our appetites for the second advent. We, we, we wait. We, we, we think about what it was like for God's people to wait then to help and encourage us in the way that we wait now. We, we we long for Jesus' coming. And, 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 and this season should encourage that in us, to, that, that longing for Jesus' coming, that, the reminder that, um, yeah, let's not get too, you know, caught up in all the, the extras of life here and all the diversions and all the distractions because Jesus is coming. And this, this, this season helps us laser in on that again. This season helps us focus in on that. We long for his coming. And it's been a long time coming. And when something's a long time coming, it's easy to sometimes lose our focus. 
and let our lives and our minds and our hearts drift off to other things. Because it has been a long time coming. What, what is it like to long for a person coming? Um, there, there's a guy who talked about how he, he spent his um, teenage years working in um, oil fields during the Christmas break. And he described that experience that he and, um, so they would, they would uh, dig rocks out of ditches in these, in these fields on, on cold days during the month of December when he was home for, from school. And so he and the rest of his crew would get dropped off by the foreman very early in the morning while it was still dark out. And the, the foreman would, would say, uh, all right, get to work now. I'll come back for you. And then he would, the foreman would drive off. And so all day long, they would, they would dig. They would work in freezing temperatures out in the cold prairie, in the middle of nowhere. So those young guys, by about like the mid-afternoon, the mid-afternoon, they, they, they'd start to be thinking, well, well, you know, maybe the foreman is on his way. <laughs> and by about 4 p.m., they'd be really tired. Anyone seen him? By like 5 p.m., they, they'd be like digging, looking, digging, looking. Because that, that, that cold air would get even like icier once the, once the sun went down. Surely he's got to be coming soon. They'd be thinking about the meal waiting for him at home, the, the, the warm home, the, the hot bath. And finally, just when they thought they couldn't wait any longer, those familiar headlights would come over the horizon. Boy, no one had to tell them to like gather their tools and climb out of the ditch. They were ready when he came to take them home. Are you? Are you? Some of you have been digging for a long time. And the toil is tiring. The work has been hard. We think about a hard year. There have been a lot longer stretches, like probably in all of our lives, of, of difficulties and challenges. And maybe, maybe uh, you're worn out. Maybe there's times where you just feel burnt out, tired out from life and all the challenges put in front of you. That, that, that ditch, so to speak, is, is deep. And, and sometimes the work, the toil seems endless, doesn't it? When's it ever going to end? When are, when are things going to change? And, and maybe, um, like those, maybe, you're, maybe you carry a, a burden. Maybe, maybe guilt, maybe fear, maybe worry, maybe the, the burden of a, a broken heart. Maybe you just, you've walked a very long and lonely path. You, you've, you've been challenged by things. Your, your faith has been challenged. You, you've come up um, against one difficulty after another in life, wondering how you're going to get through this, what, what's going to help you, how, 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 this can, how can you navigate this as an as individual, as a family. Hardship after hardship, and maybe, maybe you found yourself, in a sense, searching the horizon. Searching the horizon for the coming of the king. Have you ever found yourself wondering, is he really coming? Is he really coming for us? Is he really going to return? Friends, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Remember the last words that the angel spoke to Mary. No word from God will ever fail. Jesus promised he's coming. It's, it's quite a few times there in the Bible. You can't get past it. No word from God will ever fail. Those were the words the angel comforted Mary and strengthened Mary with. This promise is coming true because no, no word from God will ever fail. That means Jesus is coming. So, tis the season to be looking not for a jolly man in a red suit, but for a mighty king riding on a white horse. Because with a command, he is coming, and with a command, the dead are going to rise. With a command, the devil is going to slink off in defeat. With a command, kings will be giving up their crowns. And with his command, the brokenhearted will be giving up their despair. And with his command, guilty souls, guilty souls will be filled with joy. 
and everything sad will be gone for good. This is good news. So, if you knew that Jesus was returning tomorrow, how would you feel today? Anxious? Afraid? Unprepared? Listen, put those fears away. I want you to remember this. The coming of the kingdom is good news. This is good news, friends. Good news. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. So let your answer be happy, relieved, excited. How do we feel if we knew Jesus were coming tomorrow? Happy, relieved, and excited. This is good news. The coming of the kingdom is good news. Sadness be gone. Listen, heaven, heaven is God's answer for any suffering you're going through. Heaven is always God's answer for all suffering, for all hardships we're going through. We can be happy and relieved and excited. So I want you to think about this question today, this week. If you knew Jesus were returning, if you knew Jesus was coming tomorrow, what would you do today? If you knew that Jesus was coming tomorrow, what would you do today? Everyone just close your eyes for a minute and think about what your answer would be. Just one of many answers. It could be many things. If you knew Jesus was coming tomorrow, what would you do today? Does everyone have an answer? Okay, then do it. Then do it. Let's live in such a way, let's live in such a way that, that we wouldn't have to change our plans. Let's live in such a way that we would live if we knew Jesus was coming tomorrow. And so we wouldn't have to change our plans. Because he's coming. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your promises of coming that you first fulfilled by being born here and doing everything to make us right with you. Thank you for fulfilling that promise and, and giving us the encouragement that you're in the same way going to fulfill your next promise to come and bring us to be home with you. So no matter what life throws our way, no matter how cold it seems, no matter how difficult, um, no matter how cold life is or how um, barren it seems at times and how difficult, um, just focus our eyes on you and that the truth, the good news, that you're coming again for us. Uh, let that be the thing that lifts us up. L let that be the thing that directs and, and gives direction to our preparations to celebrate your birth here in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.